After you create a table, you have a layout of cells, and if you want to learn how to modify the cell layout, like let's say merging some cells together, for example, I've got the title of the table. If I don't want it crunched up in this cell, but I want to merge these cells together so it stretches and spans across three columns, then to do that, go ahead and click and drag and select all three cells. And then to merge them, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either go ahead and right click on the selection and go down and merge. There you go. Or let me hit undo. Come up here, click on the related contextual layout tab, go to the merge group, and you get the same option there. Click on it and it's merged. Then after you merge it, if you're like, no, 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 I want to go ahead and break it up. Let's go back to three. Or better yet, let's break it up into five. Go ahead and right click in the cell and go down, you get the splits. You can go ahead and split it there, of course, up here on the layout tab to the merge group. You can also click on split. And it says, how many columns do you want and how many rows from this cell? Ooh, I can have additional rows from one cell. We'll keep it simple. Let's do something like five to see what that looks like. Click okie dokie, so in that row, I get five cells. Or five columns, but, well, within that row, five cells. And then if I'm like, no, I don't like that, we can, of course, come up here and click on Merge, and then right-click and do the splits again, and say, let's just do three, and then go ahead and click Okie Dokie. Okay, it's not aligned just right, but we can take care of that. Hover over the first border of the cell here until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Click and drag, drag, drag. Oh, beautiful. Let's bring this guy back in. Drag, drag. Nice. Let's go ahead and merge them so with it selected here, all three, right click to merge because the next option I want to show you is the layout alignment. So on the layout tab and alignment group, you can go ahead and choose, well, the default up here is the top left. If I want something centered horizontally and vertically, let's do, oh, that looks better. You can do the bottom, you can crunch it over to the right, but I like the middle. And then you have text direction. Go ahead and click on that, and you can flip it that way, flip it this way, flip it back to where it was. Or you can, of course, go ahead and right-click on the selection here, and you get the text direction option in the shortcut menu. But this way you get the template for the orientation. So if you choose right, it's over to the right, or left, and then click Okie Dokie. It's falling on its side. I don't like that. Let's go ahead and hit Undo. Let's go ahead and go inside another cell. As you can see, you've got a margin over to the left-hand side. If you want to increase that margin, then come up here, Layout tab to the Alignment Group, Cell Margins, click on that. And you can see the left is 0 0.08. We can, of course, increase that horrendously. And go ahead and click Okie Dokie, and that updates all of them and pushes them all over. Let's go ahead and hit Undo. And then finally, you can set the properties for the table by, well, either coming up here on the Layout tab to the Table group and clicking on Properties, or close out, you can bring up the same window, right-clicking anywhere within the table, and in the shortcut menu, Table Properties. Well, let's go from left to right. First off, the table here, and you can have the size, preferred width, you can set it, the inches, as opposed to clicking and dragging here. Then you have the alignment. So over to the left, we can go ahead and do right. Now, it's not going to adjust because I'm from margin to margin. So if I come over here and hover over the right-hand border of the table and click and drag it in, now I'm not right up against the margin, the one inch over to the right. So if I go ahead and right-click and then go back down to Properties and then say Right Align It and then click Okie Dokie, then it lines it over to the right one inch margin. And you can see it up here on the Home tab in the Paragraph group. And you click on the tag here, then it updates and it shows you that it's aligned to the right as opposed to the left. So let me go ahead and hit Undo several times to get back to the way it was. And then right-click, Table Properties. And then if you do have it shrunk up where text can actually go around it, you can select that and say Go Around It instead of just having it above it or below it. And in this case, it's not going to go around it because, first of all, I don't have any text above or below it. And even if I did, the table's not small enough to have some extra space where it can wrap around it. Next, we have the row, the size, the specified height. You can go ahead and customize that. You can have it at at least or exactly that height. 
you can allow the row to break across pages. So if the row continues, it can break over to the next page. You can also have it repeat as header row at the top of each page. So this is the first row. The first row is known as the header row. And so if you have labels for each of the columns here, and the data continues on to the next page. When you get to the next page, you just have the data here, but you wouldn't know, okay, are these the employees? Are these the people or volunteers? So you can go ahead and check that you want that to repeat on the top of each page so you can identify who these people are and also what this is, of course, the place, and then also the numbers and sales. But that's if, if I closed out of here, well, I'd have to split this up and have three columns and have a label for this column, a label for that column, a label for the other column, as we talked about in the previous training video on selecting and sorting. So let's go ahead and right click again and bring up the table properties. Then you've got by column, you also got by cell, and you got the vertical alignment for the cell. If you want the contents of the cell to be centered or at the bottom. And so if I do center, click okie dokie. Okay, for that cell, it's centered. Unless, of course, I want to update all of the cells and then right click and bring up the table properties and center them all. And then right click, table properties. Let's go to the alternate text here for the title and description. And the purpose of this is that the information is useful for people with vision or cognitive impairments who may not be able to see or understand the object. So a title can be read with the person with a disability. If you have people that will be perusing your documents with disabilities, we need to help them out. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.